Hello and welcome to another edition of the Franklin County Sheriff's Office Connecting with the Community. I'm your host, Napoleon Bell of the Community Response Bureau. When I got out of the military, I sought that brotherhood again, that pride. In the Sheriff's Office, there's no greater uniform out there. It's a great honor to put this uniform on every day. I wear it with pride. You won't find a career that's more challenging, that's more rewarding. And I'd like to welcome my, my guest today, Deputy Griffin. So welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. You know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm real excited about letting the, uh, our, our, our residents of Franklin County hear about all that is going on, you know, with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office and the Community Relations Unit that, that you're a part of. I mean, when I came over to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, I was amazed at how much that, 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 that you guys do over there. Absolutely, and it's constantly growing, it's constantly expanding. We're trying to implement new ideas and new things to put out to the community, so yes, it is a lot. <laughs> well, I, I can't imagine you doing any more, and we're gonna get to all of that, but first, let's talk about you. I mean, okay. how, how long have you been a deputy? Uh, so I've been a deputy sheriff for six years now. Um, I started off initially at Jackson Pike. Uh, I worked at the corrections, at the corrections center. Okay. Correct, on the corrections level. I was there for about three and a half years. Um, and thankfully I got the bid to community relations, but part of that requirement is I did have to go out to patrol to complete the field training portion. Mm -hmm. So uh, once I efficiently completed that, I was able to move into community relations. Now community relations, you talk so much about, or you've been talking about, there's so much work to be done. I mean, you, you left uh, the corrections and then in patrol for a moment, but now you, you're, you're in community relations where there's so much going on. Why did you decide to make that change? So honestly, it was a dream job for me. I knew that um, I wanted to be in community relations eventually. I didn't know when that would happen specifically, uh, but I knew that it was something that I wanted to do that I'm passionate about. And ultimately, the work that we do out in the community is so rewarding. I couldn't ask for a better job because I kind of get the best of both worlds. I get to be a deputy, but at the same time, I get to work and connect with the community, uh, which is absolutely amazing. It's, it's a priceless job to have. Excellent. Well, that's, as I know, a focus of, of Sheriff Baldwin is connecting with the community to an outreach and engagement to make sure Absolutely. that we have that, you know, the, those, those bridges to the community. So you're, you're, you're doing a lot of that. So let's talk about some of the programs, because I know there's so many. We could probably sit here and talk for, for several hours. But first of all, let's, you know, talk what um, I, one of the programs that, that, that I've heard so much about um, and involves women and, and, and RAD. And so explain to us what RAD is. Absolutely. So our RAD program actually is an acronym, and that acronym stands for Rape Aggression Defense. Uh, this is a nationally accredited program, so it's pretty much you can take it anywhere across the United States, and there's some PD or sheriff's department that offers this program. Uh, now at the sheriff's office, basically what we have um, came up with is it's a 12-hour program that we offer to the women of Franklin County and there is such thing as a, a rad for men oh wow um, I, I however did, I did we haven't had any of those okay. classes just yet and okay. we're hoping to do so uh, but the women's class it it is good for women for teenagers as well as girls as well and teaching them how to protect themselves so we're teaching them every everyday moves that they could do and how to use their body mechanics to protect themselves if they were to be in that type of situation um, because it's great to have have, you know, dad, brother. It's great to have law enforcement, but again, if something like that happens, we're not always going to be there. So this program, uh, it allows them in that 12-hour course to learn those moves and that muscle memory so if something were to happen, they would know what they could do and they can be empowered and confident enough to know that they can protect themselves. Now, is this a course, you know, where they're teaching judo and this, that, and the <laughs> other, you know, and poke the eyes out, all this type of thing, or, 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 or you talk about muscle memory? So thankfully, no, it's not any ninja moves or throwing ninja stars or anything like okay. that. Um, but everything that we do is it's pretty much targeting vulnerable areas on that person. Mm. But the moves themselves are not very difficult for the women to do. So no matter what age that you are, these moves are appropriate for anyone and they can do them. So it's gonna be things like punches, which we call our strikes. Mm -hmm. um, it might be what we call spear fingers. So those are gonna be things that, you know, you're gonna keep your hand bladed and you're gonna focus on things like the throat, potentially the eyes. Um, and then we also focus on a lot of kicks. 
and there's about four different types of kicks that we teach them, one of those things being like a knee strike. So you're targeting on that specific area instead of some of the smaller areas where with, once you lose that fine mo motor memory, you know, you may not necessarily be able to hit those areas. Oh, okay. So, well, and you talked about ages. Is, is there a certain age minimum or maximum that can be a part of this? So there is not. We've actually seen as young as 10. Um, and we've seen as old as 74. So the age range is kind of all over the place. Um, and typically in the RAD program, we don't talk about anything, even though it's considered rape aggression defense, there's nothing that's graphic. So it is age appropriate okay. for some of the younger ladies, uh, for some of our younger youth that's out there. So no, there is no such thing as a requirement. The only thing that we typically say is, for, for instance, with someone that is younger, we just make sure that mom is comfortable with at least some of the definitions that we will be talking about. But again, nothing is graphic at all. Okay, okay. Well, very good. That sounds like an incredible program. And you said you, you, you have a men's class. Up. You're able to do a men's class. We are. But, you had one but yet. I don't think men feel like they need that type of class just yet. Yeah. So. Well, hey, I, I'm, I'm always willing to jump in there. You know, it, it, I, I think you can. Well, good. You, you know, can get it started for there, us. There you go. <laughs> Well, we have an idea here. <laughs> One more thing. Well, we'll make it happen. Good. Um, so, so if any uh, men are out there, you know, that want to be a part of this, make sure you give them a call. Yeah. We're going to give you their numbers and all that to be able to do that. But I think it's, you know, it's, it sounds like a good program for anyone, Absolutely. you know, to, to learn a little bit of self-defense there. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the other programs, which is pretty hot now, is, uh, is the craze, I understand. Um, tell us a little bit about what craze is, and once again, another acronym. Mm -hmm. Acro so, so tell us about that. Okay, so our craze program that we offer uh, is another acronym again, mm -hmm. which stands for Civilian Response to Active. Um, I'm sorry, Civilian Response to Active Shooter Events okay. is what that stands for. Okay. Um, and so obviously we are teaching the community and the public how to stay safe if that situation were to happen. So it's a four hour class. We actually have a part one and a part two, but in the very first craze class, um, it's more so a setting where we're training, we're educating, we're giving stats, we're giving numbers, and we're also giving the community a strategy in terms of their deliberation phase, what they're actually going to do. So if they've never came up with a plan, if they've never even thought about what they do in an active shooter situation, we provide them with some of those tools. We give them some of those things that they can make a part of their plan so at the end of the day, we're all safe. Wow, so, so it, it, you know, I, I hear you talking about plan. Uh, you know, at least come up with a plan to, to know what you're going to do. It's almost like a, a fire drill. Of course, because if you have never been in an active shooter event, how do you know what you're going to do? How do you know how your mm -hmm. body is going to respond if you've never even thought about that and taken your mind there? Wow. So you, is this available, you say, to businesses, to schools, to to anyone absolutely pretty much anywhere in franklin county that someone will request us to come and do this we will absolutely come out and do it we've done it for businesses we've done it for daycares for churches for civic associations i mean um, smaller groups as long as there's a need for that that is something mm. that we will go out and provide to the community yeah well, i think that's probably on the, on the on the top of people's mind especially with today's environment absolutely and so much that we see in the media that they want to know well, what would i do of you know if I, if I was in this situation of course and even for us in law enforcement you know, it's great for us to have all the tactics on how to respond, but if that event were to occur, those our people in the community are the ones that would be there first. And so it's mm -hmm. about what they do and that response time that it takes us to get there to keep them survivors at the end of the day. Right, exactly right. Well, well great to hear that that, that is going on um, in, in that type of training. And like I said, to our viewing audience, there's so much that the community relations uh, unit is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand there's, you know, when you talk about community involvement, there is a piece called VIPS. Absolutely. Absolutely. So another acronym, uh, which stands for Volunteers in Public Safety Support, uh, is what that represents. And so this is actually kind of like a triage of different um, elements all put together in one class. So it's going to be an eight-week uh, training course that the civilians will go through. Uh, and what they're going to be learning is they're going to be learning elements of police. They're also going to be learning elements of fire and EMS. So if for whatever reason there was a massive casualty of sorts, um, disaster preparedness, that kind of thing. They can actually come out, they're trained to come out and assist us in that situation, especially when we need lots of people, mm -hmm. we need lots of manpower. So they will be able to do some of the things that we don't necessarily have to do and we can take care of some of the other priority. Okay, okay, so you've got the VIPS program. Um, also, and, and once again, bringing community together to, to, to be those 
what do you say, those, those triage, those, that, those almost first responders. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay, so. Absolutely. So our Citizens Academy that we run um, is a nine-week course. In the 10th week, they actually do a graduation, which is really, really nice. Oh, okay. Uh, but what they do is they come and they spend one night a week with us throughout that nine weeks, and they're actually going to be learning more so about the law enforcement training giving the community the option to come in and see how we run, see how our operations are, to see all the different opportunities that we have at the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, which essentially is limitless. Um, and there's just a lot of elements that people don't necessarily know that law enforcement offers. So they get to come in and each night they're learning something different. So that can be drug awareness. It might be gang awareness. Uh, it could be having our SWAT team come out and teaching them some of their response and showing them some of their vehicles that they utilize. Mm. Same thing with our canines, they'll come out to that. So they honestly get kind of like a first hand, almost close to training in terms of what the sheriff's office offers to the deputies. So it's really, really engaging. They meet a lot of different deputies um, across all of the different departments that we have. And it just gives them that ability to feel like they're a part of the law enforcement community. So, and this is nine weeks? Correct. So is it, is, is it one night per week? Correct. Okay, so yeah, and and how long are those are those trainings? Then? So those, so each night that they spend time with us um, mm -hmm. is going to be three hour sessions. Okay, is the way that that works, and it's usually in the evening time. Wow, so so they can learn so much, you know, in nine weeks, and then they graduate after that. Absolutely. So now, are they full fledged deputies or something, or are they just? <laughs> they are deputies? not. Okay. Um, okay. So they are still part of our community. They're right. considered um, our civilians, and actually, there's opportunities for them that after they graduate from the Citizens Academy, that they can number one get involved in some of our other programs, okay. uh, like VIPS. But then they can also become volunteers for the sheriff's office. So at that point, they're allowed the opportunity to come out and help us with things like the Franklin County Fair. They assist a lot of with our patrol deputies doing DUI checkpoints. Mm -hmm. So they do have additional opportunities um, where it extends past, we just see you for nine weeks, and mm -hmm. then after that, we don't see you any longer. Oh, that's great. So it's not just it then, it's, it's, it's continue to work with. Absolutely. Now, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm on this age piece, you know, so <laughs> is there, is there a, a minimum and a maximum age that you can be involved so in? So for our Citizens training? Academy, yes, there is. Um, that's going to be 18 years of yeah, 18 years of age and up okay. uh, for that specifically. Now, if we ever decided to do like a Citizens Academy or a Youth Explorer, then obviously that will touch base to our youth community, our youth population. Okay, okay, very good. And while I'm speaking of youth, I understand that that there is a distracted driving simulator of some sorts that that, that you that the community relations often takes out to, to places, especially now with you know the the big issues with the cell phones and all those things. We've got Absolutely. so many people distracted driving. And I got to tell you the story. One time I was driving down the road, and, and, and to our viewing audience, there were three people in the vehicle, one driving, two riding. All of them were looking at their cell phones. And I, I wanted to take a picture of it, but I was driving. <laughs> right. I couldn't believe it. So tell us about this driving simulator. Very good. So our driving simulator is um, a device, a piece of equipment that we were actually, it was donated through funds from Don T. Berry's um, Maria's Message. So that's actually okay. where that came from. That's where it stemmed from. Wow. Now, our driving simulator is something that we take out to like our Franklin County Fair. We also take out to just different events because it is available for the community to request it to come out. Mm. But with that device, there's two different elements actually. There's one which is the distractive driving portion. So what happens is we put the, the teen or even the adults if they want to try it out, yes. but we put them behind the wheel of a car and then there's two different ways that they can do it. If it's the distracted portion, they can either take out their own cell phones and that's part of the course and it shows them what it's like to be a distracted driver or there's a cell phone built into the monitor screen. So either way, it's still going to have that distracted element. Then there's also a portion of the simulator where it's impaired driver. Okay. So what we do is we take our, our vision goggles that make it kind of very similar to if you were to be intoxicated, and then we put you behind the wheel of a car, and then again, they have to try to pass through the course. Yes, well, I, I, I tried that portion. <laughs> and that, that, let me tell you, that is very tough to get that done. Uh, matter of fact, I was feeling a little dizzy after putting those things on. So, Absolutely. Uh, it, it definitely, you know, well, well, you have to work at it. You do. Yes. yes. <laughs> but again, it, it, it goes to show that any form of being distracted when you're driving exactly. is not important and that obviously eyes on the road, safety first is always, always a priority. Right. I can remember back in the day before uh, phones and we just actually just drove the car and listened to music. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, yeah, now you were talking about the Franklin County Fair, big event coming up. Yes, You know, is. and that's, there's also what the Cops and Kids Day. Absolutely. So what all can, you know, what all goes on there during Cops and Kids Day? Does all, do all the deputies come out and 
and, and have a good time with, with the young people? Oh, absolutely, always. Okay. So Cops and Kids Day is a really, really fun day that we do out at the Franklin County Fair every single year. Um, and what's nice is it just gives the community and, of course, the kids the ability to interact with the deputies that are there. So you'll have deputies from community relations that come out, from our bomb, from our bomb squad, from our SWAT team, from our canine, and they even bring the canines with them. So it gives them the ability to not only interact with us, but then they can see things like, for instance, the dogs that are being worked with. Uh, they get to see the vehicles from the SWAT uh, department that we have at the sheriff's office. And then we also have activities for them. Oh, and then okay. we even provide them with like little snacks and things like that. So it is a really, really good time. Wow, that sounds great. Now, you know, and I know when you talk about canine, that the canine that everybody's going to want to see <laughs> is Mattis. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we, we just have to make sure of any canine out there, it's that Mattis, Mattis is going to be there. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. Okay, okay, because we're going to be expecting him. So hold him to it. Make sure Mattis is... <laughs> Mattis is there. And, and at the end of the year, you top it off because this, once again, connecting with the community, but also our young people. Mm -hmm. You do a piece with uh, uh, the Christmas during, uh, with, with, with cops and kids or something to that effect? So we actually have uh, an event that's called Shop with the Sheriff, okay. uh, which is really, really awesome. So every year, our unit, um, or I should say every school year, we actually work in the schools. We do what's called Operation Street Smart. Uh, which is a program that is very similar to what D.A.R.E. used to be, but this okay. is a lot more up-to-date version. So we spend a lot of time with our youth population. So Shop with the Sheriff, we're allowed to have the ability to actually interact even more with the kids. So we're able to choose families or choose worthy kids that can come out and they actually are paired up with the deputy. Uh, they get to meet some of the, some of the higher ups, okay? okay? So some of our sergeants, lieutenants, right. they get to meet some of our majors and the sheriff himself. Uh, and they get to go to Target and actually shop with that sheriff. Uh, thankfully, tar Target donates a certain amount of money to each family, so each one of those children. And then we're able to spend that time with them around Christmas, which is really, really rewarding. Wow. Well, thank you so much for this time. I mean, there's so much that the Community Relations Unit does, and, and, it's, and it's definitely making an impact, you know, on the, on the residents of Franklin County. You know, so I want to, you know, reach out to, to our viewing audience. Make sure that you take advantage of these programs. If you live within Franklin County, you can get these programs in your school, at your, at your business, whatever it might be. You know, make sure you get involved and hopefully we're going to see you also at the Franklin County Fair and in these, in these other events. Um, so once again, thank you so much, Deputy, Deputy Griffin. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank yeah, you. And, and call her. She knows everything. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, so um, thank you so much. But our, our, our next segment, we've got a, a great person that, that we had the opportunity to, to speak to uh, earlier in the week about a program that is to make, geared to make sure you stay healthy. It's Mike Jackson, my brother. All right. We, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office connecting with the community. I'm sure you had an uh, interesting time watching the first segment, but now the second segment I have next to me. No, it's not my brother. No, it's not Amir. <laughs> but this is Mike Jackson from Channel 4. Welcome to the program. Good to be here, Napoleon. Thanks for inviting me. This is great. Yeah, and, and I'm tired of getting confused with you <laughs> also. And do you owe people money? Because I, they're asking me for money. I, I, I tell you, well, I'm such a generous <laughs> person. That's what happens okay. when we come together. So, but this is going to be interesting because normally you're the person who's doing the interview. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the other side, so this is a little different for me. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to really turn the screws to you on <laughs> Okay. This. But actually, you know, it, it's, it's something that I wanted to come together and talk about with you. Uh, which is kind of a serious topic uh, in regards to the African American Male Wellness Walk. That's coming up next month, mm -hmm. and it's been going on for many, many years. Yep. Right. And so, but you yourself, you've been involved in that, um, along with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. We have been involved with that for many, many years, supporting and having people out there. But the African American Male Wellness Walk is in regards to the health of, especially African American men. Especially African American men. Yeah. yeah. And and so you 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 had. Uh, 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 an experience that, that helps you and help others better understand why it's so important to be a part of this walk. I tell you, Napoleon, it, it, it's a personal story that I share with others, and it's, it's a little different for me because I'm usually, I get paid to put other people's business in the street. Okay, okay. <laughs> so here okay. I am, you know, talking about my personal, and that's something I, I don't normally do. Uh, so it was a, kind of a challenge for me, but if my message can help somebody else, I'm more than happy to, to explain it. You know, I approach the African American Wellness Walk as an opportunity for fellowship, pass out some business cards, I'll probably meet somebody I know, I'll probably make some new friends, make a day of fellowship for it, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I showed up, and, uh, and, and that's what I did. And I started 
to walk. Now this was this was when? This is 2011. 2011. Yeah, okay. and I started to walk. Okay. And about halfway through the walk, I wasn't sure if I could make it. Hmm. It was almost like there was something that was that was holding me back. Like an, I could only go so far, and I'd have to stop. And so often, what we do with our bodies is we play this mind game. So I would stop and I'd talk to a lady in a stroller with her child and kind of pass the time and regain my strength and continue to walk. It felt like there was an elephant pressing on my chest. Wow. And at no time did I feel that I had any heart issues because as you know, I grew up in the 70s. I knew what a heart attack was. I watched Sanford and Son. You know, it's on the left side, Liz will, no, 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 no. It's right, not on your left right. side. It's right in the middle of your chest. And um, I had had similar symptoms prior to the walk, but the walk was an opportunity for me to really stop and address it. And, and the sad part is uh, my personal physician, Dr. Mark White, is one of the organizers. Mm -hmm. I did not go through the screenings. I didn't do any of that. All I wanted to do was pass out business cards, meet and greet people, and do the walk. Well, so, so wait a minute. So they have all the screenings that you're supposed to go through <laughs> yes. prior to the walk. Yes, they do. And he says, I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need and that. And they're free screenings. And, and I think that part of the Napoleon was kind of the culture that I was brought up uh, with my father taught me to be strong and not complain mm. and you know you got a little headache well drink a little water in a few minutes it'll go away and keep you know keep going life is not easy son so I think that so often not just as African-American men but all men um, we really don't talk about health the way we should mm. you know they you know women live much longer than men and my dad said, that's because women are evil, son. So you'll learn that <laughs> later in life. <laughs> that is not true. Women are not evil. But women, are, women talk. They talk. Right. They talk to each other. They talk to each other about subjects that, for whatever reason, you know, guys just don't engage in. Women go to the doctor on a regular basis. Right. That's why they live longer. So I think we as men, especially men of color, uh, need to really take a step back and realize that when we talk about this, this is something that can save our lives. Mm. Um, I, I go through my regular screenings, I go through the doctor on a regular basis, uh, and if I could just say this, prostate cancer is the most curable form of cancer if it's caught early, mm. but we don't get screened. You know, we, we, don't, we don't do these things. And actually, Napoleon, if I could just kind of explain my little situation before the health walk, uh, about 25 years ago, I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed uh, with slightly elevated blood pressure. And uh, the doctor put me on a low dosage pill, and guess what, I was cured. I was cured, okay. my, yeah, I, I was determined I was cured because I was a doctor. Right, and right. so after nine months, my blood pressure was regular, I felt good, I stopped taking the medicine, and then I let the 20 years lapse. And my lifestyle uh, during my 30s and my 40s was similar to the lifestyle of my teens and my 20s, which is just wrong and foul. And it finally caught up to me. So uh, after the walk, I went to Dr. Mark White, and uh, I, I tell the story now, and now, it's funny. You finished the walk. Barely. Okay. You Barely. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The security guards were leaving. Uh, the they're pulling up the cones. <laughs> <laughs> it was late. Right, the right. street but lights were on, but okay. I finally made it. And and so I went to I went to the doctor and um, the medical assistants were running into each other into the examination room as they were taking my blood pressure. They were more upset about my blood pressure than I was, and they changed cuffs. So he needs a bigger cuff. He needs a newer cuff. They brought in an earth pra practitioner and finally brought in Dr. White. And the one reading that I remember, um, my blood pressure was two, 258 over 137. Oh, and they gosh. said, do you feel okay? And I said, sure, I, wow. I feel fine. But, but that's what happens. We condition ourselves, we feel so bad for so long, we perceive that as the normal. And that's what it was for me. And so basically, Napoleon, I was, I was a, a walking around heart attack. Um, I went to the doctor. Uh, the doctor <laughs> diagnosed me as having high blood pressure. Um, I went to a cardiologist, uh, did stress tests, and I had 100% blockage on the left side of my heart. 100% blockage. And I said, if, if, if there's a 100% blockage, how come I'm still alive? 
and he kind of described it as a creek that, that goes downhill. Mm -hmm. And if you take a bunch of rocks and you put it right in the middle of the creek, it'll, it'll dam the, the creek, but eventually it'll find its way around the rocks. That's what was happening. I was growing these small arterial arteries, which was enough to keep me alive, but whenever I was uh, stressed, whenever I needed more oxygen in my blood, like I was walking mm -hmm. or doing something, that's where the pain would come from. So uh, with two very qualified uh, cardiologists, I had three stents uh, placed in my heart. And, and, and here's the next thing about really men and the way we neglect our health so often. While I was in the hospitals, it's almost like you take your car in for a tune-up. <laughs> you mm. realize, let's see, okay, I need a new transmission. Right, you know, it's right. not a tune-up, I need an overhaul. You know, I need all of this. Um, my blood pressure, even with the stents in my heart, was still elevated. And I went through more wow. testing, and that's when they realized I had a 90% blockage in my left kidney and an 80% blockage in my right kidney. So they had to stent my kidneys. Oh, my gosh. And, and I wasn't even finished. Um, through other testing, basically, I have cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. and um, what my doctors were most concerned about was having a stroke. Right. And so they checked my carotid arteries, and my right carotid artery was 95% blocked, the left was 80% blocked. And I was like, it was just a miracle that I was walking around. So I had radical wow. surgery on the, left, on the right side, mm -hmm. and I had a stent placed uh, on the left side, and you know, knock on wood, everything's okay. but. At that moment, Napoleon, all of these things happened to me with, within a 30-day period. And I realized if I had been screened earlier, I could have avoided half of it. I may have been able to avoid all of it. But, but the point of it is I wasn't proactive. And now we'll talk about the ball game. You know, we'll talk about, you know, these 21-inch these, you know, tires we're putting on our car. We'll talk about guy stuff, right. but not the important guy stuff. And that is our, our individual health. Wow, I mean, you're, you're, you're truly a walking billboard for, for, for making sure that you do the things and put in, in place the being proactive. Being proactive, yeah. Go to the African American Male Wellness Walk and get screened. Get the screenings, yeah. Get screened, right. <laughs> More importantly, right. the free screenings. So it's very important. So, yeah, so a definite walking billboard. We're, we're glad that you're here. I, I'm one. glad that I'm here to pull yeah. in. And, <laughs> you know, and so often, you know, people will say, you know, they wonder what their purpose is in life. And I, I'm not that deep of a thinker, so I, I really don't go that far. But experiencing everything that I have, I believe that, you know, maybe I was tapped into for this, to try to spread the word, to make more people aware. And, you know, and since my situation, uh, people have approached me and have said, hey, you know, I took my husband, you know, you're in your store, I took my husband and I got him checked out. Or, you know, Mike, listen to your story, I could see you and me, and man, I'm going to the doctor, okay. you know? So if, if I could, you know, help one or two people, you know, it, it's certainly all worth it. It was all from the African American Male Wellness Walk in a different, you know, direction that some people may think. Oh, Mike, you went to the health walk, you got screened, you realize your numbers were high? No, I didn't get screened. I did the walk, <laughs> and the walk almost killed me. Well, speaking of the walk, we, and, and we've got about uh, a minute here, African American Male Wellness Walk, it's Saturday, August 12th. Yep. Um, you're going to be there. I'll be the there. The Sheriff's Office is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Walking together, we'll get screened first. Get screened right? first, that's the important thing. Okay, so make sure that, that you, you go to the walk. Uh, matter of fact, sa Saturday, August 12th, get there first thing in the morning. If you want to have more information, um, you can go to their website at the, uh, I think it's www.aawalk.org. But be a part of this. Be a part of uh, making sure that we all are healthy. Right. And it's not just men. Women, Women people are there of all too. color, everybody is, is more than welcome to come, walk, get screened, and participate. Again, join both of us, the twins, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, and uh, hope to see you there. Take care now. Well, thanks so much to Mike Jackson. It was a great time being with him and, and really talking about being healthy and getting healthy, but taking the necessary precautions. And there's that upcoming event, you know, uh, with the African American Male Wellness Walk. So one thing our sheriff uh, is doing, you know, Sheriff Baldwin has, having worked with and in the communities of Franklin County during his career, had the opportunity to see so many ordinary people doing extraordinary things for their community. He developed the Franklin County Sheriff's Community Star Program. You know, the Sheriff's Star Program was developed to give recognition to that unsung hero here in Franklin County. Each month, a personal certificate of recognition from Sheriff Baldwin will be presented to shine the light on a resident doing extraordinary things, making a positive impact in their community. You, though, are able to nominate your community star by sending in their name and your name 
the contact information, and what your nominee has been doing in the community. You can send it to myself, Napoleon Bell II, through Facebook, or email me at nabell at franklincountyohio.gov, or even give me a call at 614-525-5006. I would like to thank you for watching the Franklin County Sheriff's Connecting with the Community. I would like to thank the Ohio Media School for being a partner along with CTV. And be sure to like us on Facebook. And if you want to see something highlighted on the show, be sure to let me know at nabell at franklincountyohio.gov or give me a call personally at 614-525-5006. Have a great week and take care.